Hello students. Today I want to take you through the pneumatic schematics that are used on the base supply station. First of all we use schematics because schematics provide us with a pictorial image and an indication of how things are going to operate. When we begin to program you're going to want to rename all these actuators something that you understand. These are the names that were provided by the manufacturer. But Let's look at this horizontal cylinder. First we can see right here that it has two pistons inside of it and it has an end piece on the end. So that means that this cylinder literally cannot twist or turn inside of the barrel. If we compare that over here to the verification cylinder, it's only got one single rod here so it can twist and turn, but that really won't affect the operation of this particular cylinder. Next if we look at this cylinder, it's called a single acting cylinder, spring return. This one here is called a double acting cylinder, as well as this one here was also called a double acting cylinder. Take you through some other important information here. On the tops here are sensors on each one of these cylinders. Those sensors are reed switches, which are activated by a magnet, which is actually on the end of the piston. Cylinders usually have two names. We have the blank end here and we have the rod end when we refer to a cylinder. So to get this cylinder to extend we would apply air here on the blank end and it would extend. If we wanted it to retract we would apply air here on the rod end and this cylinder would retract. Got some other devices here. These are called flow controls. and I'm going to zoom in on those. Okay. The purpose of a flow control is it allows air to enter one way without restriction. So air would enter here, it would go through the flow control, it would then enter the cylinder here, it would drive the cylinder this direction, and when the air tries to exhaust, it would hit this ball against this seat, and then all the air here is going to be restricted, or thus metered out, so literally we're controlling how fast this cylinder can go in that direction. Okay, and you can see that all of, a lot of these cylinders have the flow controls on them. So we have a lot of speed adjustments that are available. Okay, next thing that's important here is our vacuum cups. This is a vacuum generator that when we apply enough air to it, it will create a vacuum it will trigger a switch and then it will close the suction cups here and it will hold onto the part as it lifts it up. Okay, let's look at this cylinder here a little bit closer. This is called a single acting cylinder because it only has one air supply. When we apply air here, the cylinder will extend. When we remove the air, the cylinder will then retract. Okay, let's look at it just a little bit closer. Here we have free flow coming in, cylinder extends, we remove the air, and the cylinder would then retract. Let's take a look at a double acting now. Double acting cylinder, we apply air here, the cylinder retracts, the air all exhausts out of here through the restricted orifice, and then if we wanted the cylinder to extend, we would apply air here, force it to extend, and the cylinder would go out or extend. Okay, so how do we get those cylinders to move? Well, if we look closely, we have a valve. The valve is very important because it tells us how it operates the cylinder. If we count the boxes, we got one box here, one box here. Two boxes means two positions, and it's drawn here in the one position. So this being our airline, if we follow that middle line all the way back, and zoom out a little bit. We're going to follow this middle line all the way back and it comes to our air supply. So we're going to follow it all the way back to the front here. And zoom in again. And we can see right here the middle line has air pressure coming through this portion of the valve holding it retracted at all times. Now if we wanted the valve to extend if we wanted this cylinder to extend and go out, 
we would apply energy to this valve. When this valve shifts, these ports are going to move over. It's going to then put the air pressure on this side of the cylinder, causing it to retract. So this valve is called a five-way, two-position, electrically operated, pilot valve, spring return. Each one of these symbols means something to us. And I'm going to bring them up here and show you what they mean. If we look at the valve a little bit closer, we've got our ways, which are the arrows. Okay, here are the ways, and we also have these, which are ports, which are connected to exhaust. So we've got one, two, three, four, five, five ways. The exhaust counts as one port. So one, two, three, four, five. Five ways, two positions. This triangle piece here that's not filled in stands for a pilot indicator, pilot operator, which means we apply a pilot air pressure to it to help shift the valve. Okay, and the square here on the end with the triangle going through it tells us that it's electrically operated. And last on the valve we have the spring, which means that when we energize the valve and shift it, we remove the energy and then the spring causes the valve to shift back. Okay, so let's look closely at some of these valves. Here you can see we have one coil, one coil, one coil, one coil, one coil, and one coil. So most of the valves only have one coil, so they're a single acting valve. Now if we look a little bit closer at the horizontal cylinder, there are two coils on here. Okay, we'll zoom in on that because that's important information that we need to know. So what this means now is it's going to take a signal to extend and retract. So it take an output to extend the cylinder this position or extend this position depending on which position it's in but either or it would take a cylinder to extend it it would take an output to extend it or an output to retract it due to the fact that it has two electrical coils on the end of it. Okay, and let's look at some of the other ones and how they work. So with this one here, the vertical cylinder, the way this cylinder is going to operate is, is we are going to apply an electrical signal on this coil. This cylinder will then extend. Once we remove this electrical signal, this cylinder will retract due to the fact that it has the spring on it, which is then going to shift the valve back to its normal position. So it would only take one output to both extend and retract this verification cylinder. Whereas with this horizontal cylinder, it has two coils, so therefore each position, extend or retract, is going to require an output on our PLC. Now there's one thing that's important about the types of valves that was chosen. If for some reason these cylinders are extended and in the event of a power failure the cylinders will by default automatically retract. Okay, I think that just about covers everything on here. Hope that's made it a little bit easier for you to understand. Just remember, the symbols are our friends. Once we learn how to read them and understand them, we can determine how just about any machine is going to operate. Thank you, and we'll continue on with our series.